people joining. Thank you everybody for, uh, for being here. We're excited to have Emma Doyle back uh, talking about coaching and performance um, and, and all that great stuff. And uh, thank you guys for, for spending some time with us. I want to just quickly talk about the next program we have at Center Court 360 before kicking it over to Emma. So um, I'm just going to share this image with you. So I'm actually going to be hosting. I'm a, my name is Rob Flynn. I'm the um, academic director at Center Court 360. And I want to talk, you know, specifically to athletes, um, athletes that are looking to engage in the recruiting process and, and talking about their social media profiles, uh, ways that they can um, contact coaches in a way that's, that's responsible and, um, you know, gets them what they what they want out of the recruiting process. So I know this is a complicated topic. I know there's a lot of mistakes that the kids make. So I'm excited to to host this session. And um, if you have any, I'm going to put the registration in the chat. So if you're interested, just feel free to register. It's a free webinar. And with that, uh, Emma, welcome and uh, take it away. Fantastic. Thanks, Rob. I, I think I could uh, benefit from that. I still need plenty of help with my social media. <laughs> it's, uh, it's definitely a, uh, a challenge. I, uh, I just I thought I'd start with a funny story. I just put it up on Facebook just then about um, I had a goal of getting my driver's license here in the States. And uh, it's been a very, very um, hilarious process because, of course, I've been driving for, you know, sort of almost 30 years. And so the, the whole concept of, of driving here, especially in Colorado, uh, is, is a few different rules. For example, mobile phones. You can hold your mobile phone and drive a car in Colorado. Like, what the? Like, in Australia, no way can you do that. Uh, if you're over 17 years of age and you are sitting in the backseat of the car, you don't have to wear your seatbelt. Are you kidding? So I nearly failed the written test. And then uh, I drove, got my appointment at the DMV, drove down there and I forgot to bring my glasses for the eye test. Yeah, good one. So I had to then go back the same day, did the eye test, uh, then went for the driver, driving exam. And uh, I'm in the car and this lady um, that's, that's testing me, thank goodness she liked my accent, but my GPS started going off, right? So I picked up my phone, now knowing legally I was allowed to turn it off and meanwhile, missed the traffic light in front of me. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> fortunately, on Monday, and this is many, many months later, um, and it's a much longer story than that, much funnier, but that, that's the super short version. And uh, an example of a goal that I set myself, uh, which on Monday will finally come to fruition. So I'm not sure if any um, expats out there, maybe you can relate to having a, a story like that. But whenever I cross the road here in the States, I still like, I have to look like three times because I always subconsciously look the wrong way. And it's amazing how often our subconscious can get in the way of our uh, goals and dreams. So enough about me. Let's hear from you in the chat box. I love a bit of chat box interaction to see who's in the house. I can see Candice, you absolute legend. <laughs> love your work. Camera's on. I can see that gorgeous smile. Thank you so much. Uh, who else have we got in the house? Uh, just today, let, let me know how you're feeling. So just say Candace from Canada and I'm feeling whatever you're feeling. Maybe it could be sensational. Uh, let's see Let's see if we can think outside the square than just good. Uh, fantastic. I like it. What else? Who else have we got online here? We've got Chris in the house. Uh, Rob, how are you feeling? Let us know. Danny, Ralph, thank you, everyone. Oh, my friend in Greece. Thank you so much for being here. I love all the different countries that we have and I'm excited to get going today. So please interact in the chat box. You know that I, I love to see who's online and, um, and what everybody's um, up to. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen. I'm feeling positive about screen sharing this evening. I'm feeling very, very positive about how we're going to go. Uh, Thumb, thumbs up, Candice, if you can see my screen. Looks good, Double looks thumbs good. up. Yes. Love your work. Perfect. All right. Performance matters and so do you. Connecting your why to motivate your 2021 goals. So um, make no mistake about it. This, this is the number one message of tonight's webinar. Uh, and that is the why, 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 why. We're going to be going over lots of obviously practical strategies as we always do. 
uh, to help you peel back the layers of the onion to get to your why. If the why is connected to the goal, it's so much more powerful. Please um, throw questions in the chat box. And uh, like I said, I'll hopefully get to them at the end of the evening, um, if not along the way as we go. So that's where, where we're at. Uh, just a quick in the chat box, if you were with us on the last Centre Court 360 webinar, we did anxiety and I always give you a game plan. If you weren't, don't panic, don't worry. Uh, but it is to let you know that this is what is coming. Bronze, silver and gold or 15, 30, 40. I mix it up each time. Um, but I'm just curious if you were on the webinar last time in the chat box, just say yes. And next to that, I'd love to see, did you go for bronze? Did you give it a go as in mindfulness? as in that breathing exercise for two minutes? Um, did you give technology-free training a go? Did you put your mobile phone to the side? And did anyone commit to an anchor? So remember, an anchor could be something on the dampener. It could be, I always use my thumb, my index finger, and my, and my middle finger, my head, heart, and my gut. And I say to myself, I can do it. Um, so did you commit to that for a minimum of six months? Remember, this stuff really is super awesome. And uh, I love that we've had some people um, giving the game plan a go. Uh, that's where we're heading at the end of the webinar. You know, I always invite you to take action. So uh, if you weren't, that's what's coming your way at the end of this webinar. All right. Uh, one more quick um, little story to begin with. Uh, when I was thinking about goals, I've been a goal setter for at least the last 10 years of my life. Uh, I love goals. I, I'm a huge believer in goals. Uh, and, you know, I've changed in how I've gone about my goals over the years. And one of my mentors said to me the other day uh, around my goals, he said, well, it's a bit, it's a little bit like when you land in Rome and Italy is one of my all time favorite, favorite places, the food, the, the people, uh, the wine, amazing. Uh, so when you land in Rome and if you, let's say you're there for seven days, maybe you've got everything mapped out. You know, Monday you're going to see the Colosseum and then Tuesday, you know, the Spanish Steps and Wednesday, the Parthenon, and, and you're, you've got everything mapped out. And so all of a sudden your week is entirely mapped out. Now that maybe really suits some people. Uh, just sometimes the danger in that, of course, that, that's a very structured goal. Uh, is you miss out on all these things, like just randomly getting a bike and just going along the uh, the canals. And uh, I, this is one of my all-time little favourite restaurants. Um, the, the little streets of Rome, I love getting lost in Rome because you never know, you may end up just walking home. You go out looking like that, but you end up looking like that. Uh, yes, uh, don't mind a bit of <laughs> shopping in Rome. They do dress very well. Um, but um, but it, I think I just wanted to share that to set up again about one of the take-home messages straight away for this webinar is that setting your goals is so much related to who you are as a person. So what's going to work for you might not work for me and vice versa. So that is one of the important elements, but to, not to overstructure a goal, but to always know wh where it is we're heading. Uh, so speaking of which, if, if you haven't joined this before, we do cover the same four things. What are they? The why, the what, the how, and the now. And the reason I'm even just spending a little bit longer on this slide is because guess what? That is how we set goals. That is the critical step to setting goals. We have to start with the why. Make no mistake about it. If you miss that step, you're probably not going to get as far as you could. The what, what is the goal? And then how, how are you going to achieve the goal? And then the now is, is just the accountability piece. So that's how I structure every single webinar. And it's actually how I structure my goals. And it's how I work with my clients in structuring their goals. So the webinar structure, and it's, if you go back, I don't know how many now, Rob, I've done with Santa Court, but it would be close to, I at a guess, probably 25 webinars. And the structure is exactly the same. So I'm not reinventing the wheel here. Uh, and there's people much smarter than me that have educated me on this process. And that's what it's all about. Stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us, especially on International Women's Day next Monday, the 8th of March. That's how we 
create a world of gender equality. All right, so where do we start? The motivation. What's your motivation? And I am going to, of course, invite you to share in the chat box in just a moment. But just take take that minute. And even Rob was um, talking to me earlier uh, before this webinar about a great teaching point, which is just why are you here? Why are you even at this webinar? So just as I go through some of the unforced areas that I see as it relates to goal setting, just start to reflect on your own self as well. Maybe you can relate to some of the things I'm putting up if you're a coach or a player. But some of the, the unforced areas, the dreamer, the dreamer, the person that just puts the, the goal, it's like, oh, I've got this dream and it's so far out of their reach. It's, it's unachievable or they actually never share it or they never write it down and they're just, they're just out there in the world dreaming. I'm sure I can think of plenty of people, some that I'm even related to that, uh, that maybe share, share this about being a dreamer. The next one is just you, you set the goal, you might write it down, but you have no connection or potentially you're motivated from a place of fear or pain. So you're disconnected to, to the actual goal because you're, you're actually like, oh, I, don't want to, I don't want that to happen, so I'm going to set a goal. Um, so you, you really, the connection is coming from a place of uh, sort of getting out of trouble almost. Um, and as a result, you don't really connect to your, your why. So you're disconnected from the goal. And then the other one that maybe so many of my, my athletes can relate to is just essentially outcome-based goal. All your goals are just, this is what my UTR needs to be, or this is what my ranking needs to be, or this is what I need to be to be able to achieve this level in my sport. And of course, your identity becomes wrapped up in that goal of making that squad or making that team. And all of a sudden, when you don't make that team or you get injured or something happens along the way, your, your identity is completely wrapped up in your, your ranking, um, so, so to speak, in, in tennis is what, how we would say it. And that is a real uh, issue when it comes to goal setting. Um, and ultimately, you end up quitting on your dreams. And, and that, that, of course, is no one here on this webinar, obviously, uh, but these are some of the unforced areas that I see as it relates to goals. Uh, your turn now. I'd love to hear some reflection questions for you. Why are you here? Why, why did you attend this webinar? Do you set goals? You can answer any of these. Just throw out something in the chat box. Are your goals written down? Do you read them regularly? And do you help, if you're a coach listening or a parent, do you help your child or your or your players or your student athletes do this? Such an important process. So um, just let me know, go ahead and just let me know why you're here and then hopefully I can layer that into the webinar as well as we go along into the chat box. And as you're doing that and you're reflecting on your process, it is important that we flip our unforced errors into winners as we do most weeks here at Senate Court. Always get used to flipping it. If I'm a dreamer, Oh, and before I go there, I saw this sign the other day that I, I loved because <laughs> one of my mentors um, when I was a young coach, he'd say, Emma, you're not lost, you're here, you're right here. And I would say, yeah, but, like, this is not working and I'm not, you know, I hardly achieved any of my goals. And he'd say, you're right on track. You're exactly where you're meant to be and this is what being successful feels like, sounds like, looks like, and I go, it looks like, feels like crap. I'm not happy. And he goes, don't worry, you're not lost, you're here. So when I saw that the other day, I was like, I have to, th have to throw that in. So let's flip our unforced errors into winners. So if I'm not a dreamer, I'm a doer. Pretty easy flip that one. But people that take action, that's why I give a game plan every single week. But when, when you take action, you take a step towards your goal, towards your dreams. and Action is far, far more courageous than being a dreamer and saying, oh, I really want this. I really want this. But you're not really sure why you want it. And so you never take action. You've got to, you've got to be a doer if you, you want to live the best version of your life possible. Know your why. I'm going to say it and say it, and then I'm probably going to say it again, okay? <laughs> be connected to your why. And if you can, even if you start from a place of pain, that's okay. 
as long as you eventually get to a place of moving towards the goal because of pleasure, all right, the, the motivation scale, where they're motivated towards pleasure or away from pain. So if we can find the why towards pleasure because, it, you know, rather than um, I want to lose weight, it is much better at being connected, to, you know, because that's sort of like because I don't want to not fit into my genes, right? So, yeah, sure, we'd all love that. So basically, you know, why not just flip it and say, I want a healthy lifestyle, I want healthy living. And that is then towards me, heading towards the pleasure of looking after myself so I can live a long and fulfilled life. Um, and connecting to that, that positive is, um, is really important. And finally, remember, you are not your sport. So it's not uh, I am a tennis player. It is I... Uh, Emma Doyle chooses to play tennis or I choose to play tennis. It is my sport. Or I choose to play lacrosse or basketball. I know um, we've usually got a few other sports on, on uh, I promise I won't just make it all about tennis, but it is important that we remember that you are not your sport. You are not your sport. Okay. So that is really important. Your identity needs to be uh, more than just that so that's important when we write the goal as well and that's that identity one is really important for parents any parents listening to this webinar you know they'll often say uh well even just thinking about my family you know my parents would say oh you know my older sister she's arty and the other ones you know she's the intelligent one emma's got it sporty and then my little brother came along there was no genes left for him no that's a family joke i'm just kidding that's that's not a true story uh, but parents do often say that that you know oh my my daughter you know she's the she's the dancer or, or the, you know my other son he's the tennis player, and so we just got to be super careful with wrapping up your identity in that. So that what's the aspiration? You can be fully engaged. Um, that's that is the winner of setting some great goals. So five strategies and three tactics and a game plan coming your way after this quick story. I was thinking about. Um, some of my best stories about around goal setting and so I wanted to share um, one about Heather uh, who and this is a couple of years ago but it's still one of my favorite stories because um, you know she's uh, as you can see there down the bottom 51 years of age and wanted to run the New York Marathon um, really suffering serious periods of self-doubt and her coach was extremely authoritarian and very harsh on her so she didn't, she felt really, she had real strong periods of guilt if she didn't um, get the training done that he'd said, you have to do this, you have to do that if you're going to, if you really want to do this, which is great, we need that. But it was actually really hurting her. And so interestingly, she, we had an outcome goal. So down the bottom there, the outcome goal was five hours to complete the marathon. And, but how we, how we went about that outcome goal was the process of one of her mantras. Uh, just there, which is one step at a time. So that was her mantra, one step at a time, one step at a time. It could be, that could be um, similar to in sport as well, one play at a time, one moment at a time. Uh, but um, this this um, was really, really awesome when she crossed the, crossed the line. Uh, I wasn't there, but um, she, she ran me straight after. So just that one, I gives me goosebumps. Uh, I get goosebumps actually when all my clients achieve their goals. So <laughs> that's just me. Uh, I get, I'm connected to the why, you see, that's why. All right. What's next? The strategies. How many strategies? How many do we always do? We always do five strategies. What are the underlying strategies? All right. Strategy number one, a pretty, pretty basic start here, but where to start? Where am I? What is my present state? Where am I? And if you can get to that point non-judgmentally, awesome. So not oh, I'm here because I was injured or I'm here because this happened to me and the victim mentality, just leave, park all that stuff, get rid of it, take, take the backpack off your shoulders if you remember that analogy from the other week and just stand in your present state and ask yourself, where am I? The next question to ask yourself is where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? So what's my desired state? Okay, so, and that can be whatever length of time that can be. Uh, most of the time I always work on a 12-month sort of period is, is a very um, useful strategy that I use, you know, year to year. Pretty simple there, not reinventing the wheel. And then what's the gap? So what's the gap can quite often 
help you create the goal, all right? But just where, if you're not sure where to start, just start with where you're at. <laughs> where am I right now? Where do I want to go? And then what's the gap in between? So that's a bit of a brainstorming, just the strategy, strategy number one. Strategy number two, fantastic TED, um, TEDx talk by Simon Sinek. It's a couple of years old now. And if you just put in his name and, and why, um, actually, right at the end, I think I've got the link on my computer, so I'll, I'll pop that in the chat box. If, if Rob's already not one step ahead of me doing that now, but he coded what some of the best leaders in the world, how they think about things. Now, now most human beings, what, what do we do when we set a goal? We go, well, what's the goal? We start with the what. So and most people know what, what goal they want to achieve. And then some people know how, how they might go about achieving it that very few people really are connected to that. Three-letter word, starting with W. Anyone? Anyone? Ferris? Bueller? <laughs> Why? Why? So he coded that to say start from the inside out. And, again, this is something my mentor said to me 20 years ago. He said, Emma, when you work with, with players, as a coach, the best advice he can give is don't start from the outside in, start from the inside out. And it's the same principle when we set the goals. If we can start with the why first, that is what how you will be connected and really achieve your goals and live, live the best life, um, the best story that you can. But I just love that. I love that model. If anyone's seen me present before, you'll know this is my onion model. This is your three core superpowers here in the middle. Okay, and your why is in the middle there. That's your why. And then which this, remember, stretch. We stretch like the onion principle. It's like imagine if you just wanted to put a goal there, you know, and then and then once you achieve that, then you go to the next layer and the next layer and the next layer and keep building upon who you are as a person um, and, and keep changing that every, every 12 months. But a great little, I love that concept. Not many people, hardly any people, that I've dealt with can really throw themselves out of the comfort zone and just like jump into the deep ocean and swim. Most people need to just get their feet wet first, and then and then they then they, then they can, you know, start to um, breaststroke before they can freestyle before they can ride a ride a wave. So one layer at a time is strategy number two. Right, as I mentioned earlier, and I've experimented with this, and any coaches listening. You know, it is really, really important that when when we coach and, and maybe a little bit as a parent as well, just to keep in mind that, uh, yes, we all have a personality preference, but remember it's not what comes naturally to me to be a great coach. It's what comes naturally to you. And the quicker I can find that out and bring that out in you, the better. So uh, I have to keep exploring ways of saying, how do, I, um, how do I change who I am to bring the best out of you? So what works for me with goal setting might not work with some of my, some of my clients. So the four personality profiles, and again, so this little clip, um, I've mentioned it probably previously if you've heard me speak, uh, is on YouTube. It does your personality match your game style. So even if you're from another sport, it doesn't matter. The concepts are the same. So you're either... The crowd pleaser. So even I can, I'm sure you can relate as a, as a basketballer. Maybe it's point guard dribbling the ball down. Who's the the crowd pleaser? The socializer personality, extrovert out there. So they're more open um, with their natural behaviors, and they're quite direct. So they'll tell you what they're thinking. Uh, they'll go off track uh, rant quite frequently, and uh, they're fun. They're super fun to be around. So. Just I'll go through them first and then I'll go through um, what each of them in, in relation to goal setting, what they might be more suited to. The aggressive baseliner. So, again, you think any other sport, the player that's um, that's usually plays an offensive in an offensive position, uh, they like to be aggressive. They're more self-contained, so they're not going to wear their heart on their sleeve, but they are very driven, extremely driven, very um, uh, process orientated and they they want to get there and they want to get there in a hurry these people don't want to set a 12-month goal they want to smash it out in less than three months uh so quite direct with the way they go about their goals the um self-contained and indirect the deep thinker is the all-court player personality uh so this personality 
If you just pop on your mute, that'd be awesome if you could just join us. Thank you. So the all court personality of the deep, the deep thinker is somebody uh, who's very meticulous, um, really goes about, wants all the stats, wants all the information, uh, wants very detailed action plans um, in the way that they go about setting their goals. And then finally, the last one is the consistent player or the relator. So this person is quite open, friendly, and they're indirect. Uh, they'll probably need a little bit of guidance with their goal setting, um, but they'll be one of your most loyal team members. And, uh, you know, they, you just got to show as a coach or a parent that you really care that maybe um, their dog had that operation on the weekend. So we're going to ask about that before we go about setting goals. So just quickly, again, check it out on YouTube. Just put in my name and personality playing styles if you want to have a deeper dive into those personalities because you'll get an idea of how you want to set the goals. Um, so the socialiser is going to need some structure. The, the, the director is just going to want a goal as simple as uh, I, I want to um, be able to swim in, in under 60 seconds. The deep court thinker is going to really want to unpack the entire process and the steps and the consistent player well get to know them and then you'll know what kind of goal they want to set so uh so know thyself is strategy number three all right um the process as as i as i mentioned in the structure of the webinar uh i just have to mention there though that's that's my little nephew um bodhi back in melbourne and he that is a funny story he was he, he did a demonstration that day. It was actually his birthday in front of a couple of hundred people with me um, on some tennis activities. And um, the crowd started singing happy birthday to him and he, he went into the big, like he just won Wimbledon pose. Um, he, he's one of my big whys, uh, why I do things. Um, love that kid. Anyway, start with your why, something bigger than yourself. Um, if you can, if something's bigger than yourself, it it's, makes the connection so much stronger of why you're doing something uh, the what, so what is the goal? Pretty simple. And make no mistake, if you are a student athlete, you need outcome goals and you need process goals, okay? That, I'm a strong believer in that regardless of your personality. Um, so, for example, the director personalities, they're going to want at least two outcome goals minimum, uh, whereas maybe the consistent player, there might be one loose outcome goal there. So that would be about ranking or about getting to this tournament or being able to make a team. Uh, but you need both. A lot of people think don't set outcome goals because then, then you'll set yourself up for failure. But in my, my opinion, as a coach and as a player, we're measured by our results. You know, so we have to, we can't just go through life and, and just all be working on our, our process. Yes, that's important, but make sure that you set a combination of both and remember um, service goals as well are uh, extremely important to help gather momentum and help um, those around you support you. The how is pretty simple. How is the action steps? How are you going to get there? And by when, by when. I highly recommend monthly, either two or four weeks. Uh, but by when, by when, who's your accountability buddy? And we'll get to that in the tactics. But look at that, the why, the what, the how, and the now. I can't wait to, um, when each of you, one day when I'm watching one of your webinars and you 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 just start going into the why, the what, the how, and the now, I'm going to get so excited. The process just works. Uh, and it works for your goals as well. All right, so write it down, write it down. Remember, remember, remember that only 1% of the population, 3% of the population, they say actually set goals and only 1% of the population actually write it down. Is that crazy? I just was like, what? And then I read another study in um, uh, from the University of Harvard. It was back in 1979 where it was 3% of the population set goals and it was 14% of the population write them down. So <laughs> I was like, okay, we might be going backwards as a as a um as a world but uh anyway write it down and then share it okay so we're going to go through this in the tactics but i'll go through it really quickly now what's your area what's your topic what's your theme what's your why and then this is really really important uh you may want to just take a photo of of that part of the um of the slide here because depending on your personality this is a neuro-linguistic programming technique um, to write a descriptive version, which really suits the socializer personality and the um, 
the thinker personality and, and maybe the, the, the relator. But it is now, for example, October 18, and I have just completed my half marathon and it feels amazing. Okay, so that's that's the d- more of a descriptive process or it's just a more of a general goal. And that is I want to be able to run a half marathon or a marathon or um, compete in this event. So it doesn't have to be descriptive, but please note that uh, that is a really awesome technique and I use a combination of both depending on what's happening around December, January when I, when I always go about uh, reviewing my goals and setting my goals. Uh, so just get to know yourself and know what works for you. Of course, step four is the how, step five is the now, and step six is the who, which of course is that part of the now. So it's that accountability buddy, which we are getting to next. Uh, in tonight's webinar, I am going to share a quick story about one of my bestest, bestest friends. Um, so her name is Beck. I call her Beck Star. Uh, and she, uh, we met in first year of university and we got along instantly. We both um, nearly failed accounting. We sat too many times in the back row, um, didn't pay too much attention, <laughs> but uh, we just instantly got along well. And she, when I first met her, she uh, had played sport all her life and she was in, um, she was in Iron, Iron, she did Iron Women events and um and then she soon she wanted to win a gold medal so her goal her dream was like i want to win a gold medal for australia that that, that's it that's all her goal was and it's been like that ever since she was a kid and she was in amazing shape when i met her and um and then she soon realized okay maybe i need to adjust it because the iron women event or iron man wasn't in the olympics so then she went into triathlons uh and then she did triathlons for many many years and then realized that she she did some testing and they were like they, they said listen cycling cycling is your you know the way that your energy system the way your body set up cycling is your thing and she did all different types of cycling mountain biking and to try and you know and and i remember sitting down with her we, we lived together for a couple of years and i just said to her hey mate uh if you're not happy without the medal you're never going to be happy once you get the medal and I think she still remembers that that one quote. This is after many hours and tears and she had all sorts of pain with her back and um, and then she decided to really set herself this goal of, of um, you know, going into the world of cycling. And uh, and there she is there. She actually won a stage in the Giro d'Italia, you know, which is a huge um, cycling race in, in Italy. And But I'll never forget she came home from that tour and she – fell off her bike and, and she said, can you pick me up in the airport? I was like, yeah, yeah, no worries. And half of her face was missing from falling off her bike. And she's one of just one of the most courageous people I know. And now she's, you know, got a couple of little little uh, umbambinos and um, lives in Sydney and now she coaches um, cycling at, at the, um, at the Par- Paralympics. And she's got a couple of athletes there. And she's just, you know, that sentence, we always come back to that sentence. If you're not happy... Without the gold medal, you'll never be happy once you get the gold medal. And uh, and um, yeah, I just I, she she brings that story up all the time. And I thought, with regards to this webinar, I thought that might be a nice little link before we go into the how, just to say that the journey of actually just setting the goal and going about achieving it. If you don't get there, or you do get there, it's not like now all of a sudden life's amazing, right? But if you never set the goal in the first place, you never even your barometer would have never got to eighty percent. So you know, we need to set the goal, but the journey along the way and what happens in the little left hand turns and the right hand turns are what makes uh, the whole goal setting process so um, electrifying. So uh, so hopefully you enjoyed those five strategies. First person in the chat box to let me know what was strategy number two. Strategy number two, strategy number two, first person in the chat box, get your competitive flow on and let me know. All right, as we move into the tactics. Anyone, anyone? Chat, I'm opening my chat. Oh, I'm not. I'll have to look at it once I stop sharing my screen. But hopefully someone got strategy number two. All right, so. 
the tactics. Now we share three tactics. So if you on this call, you probably already have your goals. So you might want to, if you've got them handy, you might want to just review them. But with the why, even if you have your goals already written down and, and you're on this webinar, or if you don't, here are some great questions to ask yourself that I know that my mentor always used to ask me. Why do you want this? Why do you want this? Okay, so pick a topic, remember first. So let's, as an example, uh, let's go with um, uh, one of the, the netball teams that I worked with. They wanted to finish within the top six of their first season. So first question to each of those girls is, well, why do you want this? And why do you care? Now, part of them might say, well, I'm getting paid to play. So I, I have to. And if that, remember, that's a, that's moving away from pain. I have to. I have to care. No, find something. Hey, I'm doing this because my teammates, they're like my family. That's moving towards pleasure. So why do you care? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of wanting to finish top six in your, in your league? Okay. And then notice again, these questions are basically similar questions, but you're just peeling back the layer upon layer. So you might be asking yourself the same thing, but you're kind of checking in to going, really? Do you really want this? Is that really why, you know, what's important to you? Why is this important to you? What's behind the goal? So if you achieve it, then what? How's it going to feel? And at the end of every single mentoring or life coaching session that I run, I always have what's called the motivation scale. So I just, it's like a little check-in. So once they've come up with their action steps of what they promise they're going to do for me between now and next month, I say, okay, well, how committed are you? One to 10. 10 is like super committed. I say, how, how, um, what's your desire? What's your motivation? What's your dedication? So I don't, you know, mix up the questions each time. But if they answer, if they go, if I go, what's your motivation towards completing these action steps? And they give me a, a six, they're not going to do it. So as a coach or a parent, a great little way, uh, a little scale system there or even to, to coach yourself if you're a, a student athlete, athlete player on this call, remember, just check in with yourself. Am I really going to do this? I said I was going to do it, but what's my number? And if, you, and if you give it less than a seven, you have to redo. You have to redo the goal. You have to redo the action step because you're probably not going to do it. So really, really important that I love those questions and I love or I always finish with a little motivation scale. So that's tactic number one. Tactic number two is the process. So here's now an example of the process. So remember the why. So I'm actually being super vulnerable here today. I'm going to share one of my goals that I am like so uh, I have a lot of um, work to do on this goal, but I decided in which of my goals to share because I set five balanced life goals every single year. But I thought to myself, if I share this goal, then I'm putting myself in a really vulnerable position. Um, so the, the the topic or the area is, is author. And what's my motivation? Above anything else is just to prove to myself that anything is possible. Writing is a huge challenge of mine. It always has been. Reading has been a huge challenge my entire life. Hence, if you've ever wondered why my E is backwards um, on my little logo, it's very personal to me, um, the reason behind that. And, you know, plenty of people, um, you know, it's, it's nothing major, but for me it's been a huge um, area to overcome. So notice the why. That's, that's what you start with. And then what's next is the goal, the goal, the what. Remember? So the why, the what. So it is now November 2021, and I have a copy of What Makes a Great Coach in my hand. Completion feels like the book within me was meant to be. That was, that's meant to, not mean to be, that's meant to have a T. See, classic example, how I forgot to put the letter T on, on the goal. That is too funny. Anyway, I hope you're giggling as much as I am on this on this webinar. You've got to have fun in life, don't you? All right. So that's that's the what. So notice the way that I've written the goal because my personality is the socializer. So with my personality, I need structure. I need I need um, a very systematic approach, uh, and that's why I've gone with the descriptive goal. Notice what comes next: the how. 
So one hour, three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, the start of my day, technology free and do not open emails. So that is the how within this month. So that's just, that that changes each month. So, because I'm accountable, of course, to the when, the man, so the, I'm up to manuscript six is, is what I'm up to that needs editing. And of course, that final step is who I need to follow up with. So these are the mentors um, that I'm accountable to do those how steps every four weeks. Uh, and that is the goal that I set for myself. Uh, these are my career goals. I have five. Um, sometimes I have five career, five personal, or some years I just have five total. This year I've just had five total. Uh, so it's a combination of personal and career for a balanced life. And at the top of the goal setting process, I always have my values Remember, your values drive your behaviour. So that's a that's an example of how you go about it just on a spreadsheet. And finally, tactic number three is your accountability buddy. So having an accountability buddy is critical. Otherwise, it you know, really, if you've got a goal, remember, you just don't want to have it just in your own head. You've got to share it. And if you share it, then you're accountable. And when you're accountable, it helps with your motivation. Even, again, if you start from that, oh, I've got to do this because my mentor needs me to do it, but it, it, it will help until you're motivated towards, hey, I'm just going to do this because this is important. Uh, again, uh, one of my mentors always just said to me with the goal, who do you need to become to get to where you want to go? Now, um, I certainly haven't met Tony Robbins yet, but I've done many of his courses, and it's not about achieving the goal. It's about who you have to become in order to achieve the goal the juice is in the growth. It's a bit like my story with my best mate, Dexter. Uh, it's, it's the journey. It's the growth that you have. And even if the goal, even if I, for example, let's go back to my goal, if I don't achieve that goal this year, chances are I'm going to be 80 or 90% close to achieving it. So maybe it happens early next year. But I'll, I'll keep addressing that each month with a mentor to check where that needs to be every two to four weeks. All right, we've reached the game plan. Okay, let me get through the game plan. Uh, but before I do, I thought let's hear from the man himself. Always with you, what cannot be done. Hear you nothing that I say. You must unlearn what you have learned. All right, I'll give it a try. No, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. Do or do not, there is no try. Uh, if you're on this call, I know you're already passionate goal setter and I hope tonight you're inspired to be a bronze medal. Just review your why. If your goal's already written down, review your why. If you're a coach, ask your, ask your players, are your goals written down and what is your why? Write down a minimum of two goals tonight if you haven't already or maybe this week work with one of your clients one process, which is the, the what you need um, an exam. I didn't give an example of a process goal, but a, a process goal is simply to improve, to improve some technical aspect on your serve um, so that you can serve, uh, be able to direct your serve wide body T on both the juice and the ad side would be a process example uh, of a goal. Uh, so make sure you've got one process, one outcome. That's why I've suggested two as a minimum. And then find an accountability buddy, share your goal, have it written down, make sure at your next session, review your goals uh, and not just have them written down. Um, have, have them written down in a journal so that when I first open this journal page, they're right there that my five are right there. So I'm, I'm very connected to them in my gratitude journal that I look at every day so that you can win your game of ugh, life. I just realized I got a new camera, so I didn't want to I didn't want to hurt my camera today. There we go. I have to start doing that now instead of hitting it at my poor little laptop. All right, there's my details. Uh, any questions? We have 15 minutes tonight and there are my details in case anyone wants to reach out.
All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And I would love to uh, hear from you in the chat box. What are you going for tonight? Bronze, silver or gold? Or have you already uh, already got your gold medal? Let me see as I stop sharing my screen. Okay, fantastic. All right, we've got some questions in the chat box. Oh, Rob, thank you for putting up the personality so people can check that out. All right, let me just scroll uh, up for this. Okay. Um, will you make any NLP intro webinar in the future? Great idea. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, would love to. On the PTR has a uh, tennis NLP online course um, on the PTR website that I filmed with them in 2018. So that's a fantastic place to start. Uh, again, I can email you um, more about that course as well. But yeah, neuro-linguistic programming, remember it's our language, what we say that affects our, our neurology, our thoughts and our feelings that then affects our behaviour. Um, all right, Candice, so why start from inside out? Great question. Uh, the main purpose of starting in that place it will help you to define your goal even more with more clarity. So if you start with the goal first, then uh, then maybe that's not actually what it is that you actually want. So peeling back the layers of the onion and peeling back the why helps you to go to the core of who you are, what's most important to you, and then being able to set the goal. So if you've already, knowing you, you've pro probably already got your goals set for the year, I can imagine. So uh, just go back over them and just check in with your deeper why, all those peeling back those layers uh, questions. Um, and, um, yeah, um, hopefully that, yeah, thumbs up, love your work. Feel free if anyone would like to turn on their video. I love seeing smiles. And certainly also a great opportunity if anyone wants to, to jump in with a question. Uh, but the next one I can see down here um, is, about, oh, who's my mentor? Well, I actually have a number of mentors. So just depending on, like with the book, uh, I've got a lady back at home, um, back in Australia, who's helping me with that. Uh, tennis mentors, I've had numerous over the years. Um, but um, just depending on what, what, goal that I have depends on my mentor but the person that I see every four weeks is uh he's a leadership consultant um in, from Melbourne and his name's Aidan Thornton and he's one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life and he is my business mentor so um but he's also a passionate tennis uh tennis guy so he knows heaps about um my industry as well so thank you for asking that but it's, it's so important to have a coach or a mentor, uh, I'll have them for the rest of my life because I want to keep growing and, and keep learning myself. So um, so that is that. Uh, any other questions? Um, Rob, are you still, do you want to jump in with anything that um, triggered your thoughts on this webinar? If you're no, still um, no, thank you, Emma. That was, you know, that's really extensive. And I think, you know, many of us, uh, I'm a coach and certainly talking to kids about goals all the time and um, the just the the detail and starting with the why as you said and and helping kids uh, deliver something that is um, you know meaningful to them so mm -hmm. thank you for your uh, for your time no worries no worries any other questions or uh, feel free we've got um, a little bit of time if anyone wants to ask anything you can unmute yourself or um... Okay, it looks like we might have lost Emma there. Um, not sure. Hopefully she'll be coming back. Um, but why don't we do this? I know we were kind of wrapping up here uh, anyway. So what I'll do uh, just to follow up with everybody is just to send the recording um, 
over you know to to your registered emails and if you guys have any other questions or anything that you um i don't know why exactly um emma jerked out but it was you know one of these zoom things but if um if you have any questions for her you can reach out directly uh to me thank you guys yeah i know she, she froze disappeared but thank you oh here she's back hold on trying to let her in and there she is all right oh it's oh. never a dull moment yeah. is it Rob? <laughs> never no. a dull moment no <laughs> oh, anyway what can you do well remember the ball is in everybody's court uh, that's right i was like are we we're we gonna wrap up here we want to vamp for a while wasn't sure yeah but. yes me neither uh but i'm i'm if there's no more questions then yeah just i hope everybody takes um takes action and uh feel free to send me your goals if anyone wants me to to look over them more than happy to look over them and uh give you some feedback but uh know, know thyself and enjoy the journey along the way so um thank you everybody for uh 51 minutes of your life that you'll never get back never get back so please go forward pay it forward uh, help others with their goal setting and thank you for um giving me a safe space to be very vulnerable with my own goal uh tonight so there's no excuses rob i'm gonna i'm gonna get that book good luck done. with your writing that's awesome i'm an english teacher so if you need any help oh yeah. see if you did if i didn't share thing. that tonight writing is very hard writing is very personal very difficult thing mm -hmm. yeah thank Great. you Thank you, everybody, for writing all those gratitude comments in the chat box. Thanks, Candice, for keeping that camera on so I don't feel like I'm talking to a blank screen. Love your work. <laughs> and thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you, Santa Court. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rob. Santa Court, appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Bye. Bye-bye.